Today we are going to be doing some meal prep. It's been a minute and I figured, you know, it's back to school season coming up pretty quick, back to work, back to reality after hopefully a wonderful summer. And so I figured let's do some lunch recipes that you can take to school, take to work. They're all really delicious. We're gonna be making three of them today. We're gonna be doing a chili. We're gonna be doing a delicious grain bowl as well as a kind of snack lunch hybrid. We're gonna be doing some whipped butter beans. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you subscribe below. As with all of my meal prep videos, I'm gonna not only give you a handy dandy shopping list that you guys can use and reference for uh, making sure you have all the ingredients you need for this meal prep, but I'm also going to go through the order of which you're going to meal prep everything just so that you're saving time. We're gonna do things as efficiently as possible because your time is very valuable and I don't wanna waste it. Okay. So the first recipe that we are going to tackle is our crispy tofu sweet potato grain bowl. It is definitely a mouthful, both figuratively and literally. In this grain bowl, we have the grain, which is quinoa, but you can use another grain if you like, like rice or you can use millet or sorghum, whatever your favorite grain is. But I think quinoa is just kind of ideal for this one because it cooks so quickly. We've got some sweet potato in here that we're gonna roast up, some zucchini, some crispy chickpeas, what else? Oh, the crispy air fried sesame tofu. Ooh, it's gonna be good. We're gonna throw in some cranberries and pumpkin seeds. We're gonna toss everything in a really tangy, lemony garlic dressing. Top it off with some of your favorite fresh toppings. Oh, it's just so perfect for a meal prep situation. So let's get right into it. We're gonna make some quinoa first. Okay, so just adding the quinoa, which is one cup. I don't know why I added four to my little pitcher here, but we're gonna add like three, maybe two and a half cups of water. We're gonna cook it until it's nice and fluffy. Alrighty then, so now that we have our quinoa cooking, it's time to prep some other ingredients. So we're going to take our chickpeas and uh, I'm using two cans here, but you can really use as much as you want. I'd say get about two to two and a half, maybe three cups of chickpeas. Rinse them off and we're gonna pat them dry on a large kitchen towel. You want them to be nice and dry so that they crisp up better in the oven in a little while. Once you've done that, you can transfer them over to a baking tray and you can toss them with a little bit of oil uh, and a little bit of salt and pepper. You can jazz it up if you wanna add some other seasonings and spices like garlic powder or onion powder, smoked paprika, but I just kinda feel like having simple salt and pepper. So that's what I'm doing. Set those chickpeas aside and let's do pretty much the same thing with our big ass sweet potato. It's a big boy. And I'm just going to be chopping it up into pretty like rough, rough cubes, you know, like, I don't know, an inch, inch and a half, whatever you want. Once you've choppity chop chop your sweet potato, transfer it to a baking tray, toss it with a little bit of oil and salt and pepper, more spices if you want. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder because that's just always so good on sweet potatoes. And then we're going to pop both the chickpeas and the sweet potatoes in the oven. Get that heating up at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna put the chickpeas on the top rack of the oven and then we're gonna slide the sweet potatoes on the middle rack below it and then bake them for 20 minutes. We're gonna turn them over at the 20 minute mark, give them a toss, Put them back in the oven, bake them for another 20 for a grand total of 40 minutes of cook time. By the time they're done, the chickpeas should be really nice and crunched up and crispy and the sweet potatoes will be nice and soft and golden around the edges. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so tasty. Okay, so we have our soy marinated or soy tossed zucchinis. We're just gonna snuggle those next to whatever you have room for in your oven. And we're gonna cook those for the last 20 minutes alongside the chickpeas and the sweet potatoes because these don't take too long. Zucchinis cook up pretty quick and we don't want them to turn to total mush. We still want them to retain some of their firmness. So let's pop them in. Bye bye. Well, this is all just coming along swimmingly. So I have a block of extra firm tofu pressing here. It's actually been pressing for probably an hour while I've just been doing other things. So we're going to make our crispy sesame tofu and this stuff is so nummy, oh my gosh. So 
What I have here in this little container is, well, bowl, whatever we're calling it, is a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, one tablespoon of cornstarch, and two tablespoons of sesame seeds. Very simple, that is gonna be kind of like our breadcrumb crispy coating type situation. Now let's mix up the wet part of our batter, which is really simple. It's just a tablespoon of rice vinegar, two tablespoons of soy sauce, and half a teaspoon of sesame oil. And if you want to sweeten it a little bit, you can add like a tablespoon of coconut sugar, which is what I'm going to do. Very simple. And now we're just going to take this big, beautiful block of tofu and cube her up. Okay, so this next step, so easy. Now that we have our little concoction here of our liquids, we're just gonna pour that right over top of our tofu. And I know it probably seems like a lot, and it is, but fear not. Now all you gotta do is just very gently toss it to coat every piece of tofu in that delicious marinade. And oh my gosh, the smell alone is so good. Now, you can see there's quite a lot of liquid left at the bottom. This will soak up. You just need to let this sit in this bowl here for about five minutes. Toss it like maybe every minute or so just to kind of keep coating the tofu in the, the marinade. And you will see in a few minutes it will have soaked up tremendously. It has been five minutes and you can see that most of the liquid has pretty much been absorbed by the tofu. So now we can add the dry ingredients, which are the cornstarch, the nutritional yeast, and the sesame seeds. So we're just gonna sprinkle that on top, do about half at first, give it another quick toss, and add the other half. This is what's gonna really help it to get nice and crispy as it air fries. And now, we can just transfer our coated tofu onto an air fryer basket. Mine may look a little unusual because I have a air fryer toaster oven, so this is just the basket that comes with it. So I'm just gonna add these in a pretty even layer, trying to ensure they don't touch so that they crisp up, get as much circulation of that hot air as possible, and these should turn out pretty good. Sorry for the background noise, by the way. My air fryer is hella obnoxious. Et voila. Into the air fryer it goes. Ooh, baby. Look at those crispy, crispy chickpeas. Let's check on our zucchini. I'd say she's looking pretty hot. Okay, so now we're just going to grab ourselves a big, big bowl and we're gonna make our delicious lemony garlic dressing that we're gonna to toss everything in in a few minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some oil, some lemon juice, a couple cloves of garlic. You can either use a microplaner or you can mince them up. We're gonna add some sea salt and black pepper and a pinch of red chili flakes if you want a little extra kick of heat and then just give it all a whiskey whiskey until it looks something like this. So now we're just going to add in our quinoa. Then our sweet potatoes. Dump it in. This is a very clever hack. Only takes a second. Ta-da! Our roasted soy zucchini. Whoa, this one's a little messy. <laughs> half a cup of chopped red onion about half a cup of fresh chopped parsley. And lastly, half a cup of roasted pumpkin seeds and a third of a cup of dried cranberries. And now it's time to tossy tossy. Very stealthily, of course. I think I'm gonna need a bigger boat. I do this to myself all the time. 
I never take bowls that are big enough for what I'm doing. Is there a Facebook support group for people who don't take big enough bowls? I think I need to make myself a bowl right now with all my crunchy toppings. I'll be right back. Crispy tofu and a touch of Parmesan cheese if you're feeling a little bit fancy dancy. I am the queen of fancy dancy. Alrighty, let's have a little taste test of this here sassy bowl. Did you hear that crunch? You guys, mmm, mmm, that's a winner. You guys are gonna love this recipe. Mm. On to the next. This recipe is super easy. You just need a few different varieties of beans. You don't even have to use the same ones that I'm using. You can swap them out for whatever you already have in your pantry. You don't need too many vegetables either. You can use an abundance of canned veggies if you have them. This is like the perfect recipe for that sort of situation. So through the magical powers of video editing, let's get to chopping our veggies. Ta-da! Okay, so now that our veggies are prepped and waiting, we can now take care of our beans. Now. If I haven't mentioned already, I've got a few different varieties. I've got lupini beans, I have black beans, dark red kidney beans, and chickpeas. Now, of course, you can just use one variety. You can use two varieties, you can do five. I don't really care, but try to get like between five to six cups of beans and you'll be good. So now we just need to drain our beans and rinse them. Rinsey, rinsey. Whoa. Shoot. That's a lot of beans. Now let us not forget about our little old red lentils here, friends. Uh, they're technically not a bean, but they are a legume and they work well in chilies. Uh, red lentils really help to thicken up the texture of your chili. So it doesn't just feel like you're getting a mouthful of beans. You know, this kind of helps to make it thick and a little bit creamy and just feel just a little more texturally enjoyable in my opinion. So yeah, don't, don't skip the red lentils. Now let's rinse them. So the last thing that I need to prep before starting to cook the chili is just making my veggie broth. Super simple. I just always use my better than a bouillon, a vegetable broth kind of base. It's so tasty. Um, and you just need to add like, I'm making about four cups of broth. So kind of like a heaping tablespoon is generally all I ever need. And just mix it with water. Super simple. I think I need a bigger whisk. <laughs> this is way too small. All right, so let's get a big ass pot heating up on the stove and you can either saute with oil or water. I'm just choosing to water saute today just to, you know, save a few calories. Okay, so we're gonna start by first sauteing our garlic and our onion. So just get that going in your stock pot first. Mmm, is there anything better in this world than the smell of sauteing garlic and onion? Mm. Okay, so once your garlic and onion has sauteed for about two minutes until it's looking something like this, it's kind of translucent, softened, smells really good, we're gonna add some more ingredients. So we're gonna add our chipotle peppers in adobo. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is what they look like in the jar, okay? Let me just focus here for a sec. They just come in a jar and they're spicy and delicious and very smoky and you can add them to so many dishes to make anything taste spicy and smoky and amazing. And then we're gonna add our cumin and cocoa powder. Yeah, you heard that right. We're adding cocoa powder because it's kind of like a genius secret but not so secret hack that I've learned about recently. And then we're gonna add our chopped walnuts while everything is kind of toasting up, getting extra fragrant in the pan. We're adding walnuts because, like I mentioned earlier, they just add so much nice texture. They don't stay crunchy like this 
after they've been cooking with all the other ingredients, but they do just add more hearty texture, which is always enjoyable. Okay, let's just let this all sit for about two minutes and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Also, my spoon broke. <laughs> Oh, okay, now we can add everything else to the pot. So I'm gonna add my red lentils. We're gonna add all of those beans, a can of mushrooms. This is optional, but you can add any other canned veggie you have or any fresh veggie for that matter that you like. Plus those chopped green peppers, our can of crushed tomatoes. If you don't have crushed tomatoes, you can always use a can of just diced tomatoes. That is a-okay. And lastly, our four cups of veggie broth. Now give that all a good mixy mixy. Oh, and of course, don't forget salt and pepper. <laughs> I almost did. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan. And then we're gonna add a few grinds of fresh cracked black pepper. Mmm. So colorful, like look at that, you guys. Mm. Okay, let's turn this up to a little boil. Put a lid on her and check on her in about 20 minutes. Okay, so while the chili is busy bubbling away, we're going to do the last recipe of our meal prep, which is the whipped butter beans. Ooh, I'm so excited. Alrighty, so I'm just got my uh, whipped butter bean ingredients here. Of course, we have the butter beans. I have to like crouch down so that you guys can see my ingredients. Uh, we've got tahini, some neutral oil, you can use olive oil, uh, lemon, we'll be using the juice and the zest, some chili flakes, some sage, and some garlic. It's so simple. It's just as easy as making a hummus. And yeah, it's great. You can put it in a sandwich. You can spread it on top of a piece of toast. You can eat it with crackers. You can dip veggies in it. The possibilities are so endless and it's great for uh, kind of a, a snacky lunch or a light lunch that you can take with you to work or school. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so this is super simple. We're going to add our butter beans to a food processor. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of a neutral oil. one tablespoon of tahini. Well, oh, that might be more than one tablespoon. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to add one clove of garlic. I'm just gonna quickly microplane that into my food processor, but you can also just mince it up. Then we're gonna take this here beautiful lemon. We're gonna zest up about half of the lemon zest. So just half of it, it's fine. This is gonna add some seriously nice, fresh, tangy, zippy flavor. And now we're gonna add the juice of that half of the lemon right in. Ooh, that hurts if you have a paper cut. Ooh, shoot. Would not recommend. Zero out of 10. Next, we'll add our half a teaspoon of dried sage, a little pinch of red chili flakes, just for a little touch of heat, a little kick. Half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt, or sea salt is fine. And some freshly cracked black pepper. Oh baby, oh baby, baby. Put a lid on it and let's get blending. Oh, ho, ho. <gasps> look how fluffy that is, that looks like like whipped potatoes or something. Oh my gosh, this is so dreamy. You do see that, right? That is so smooth. Mmm, smells great. Oh my gosh, that is gonna be so good on toast. Like that's what I want right now. I just want a piece of toast with these whipped butter beans. Oh. Janelle can't come to the phone right now. She's busy eating beans. Mm. And wouldn't you know it, folks, by the time our butter beans were finished whipping, our chili is also done. Look at that, it's thickened up so nicely. Mm. 
this girl is gonna be eating good this week. A lot of beans. Full of beans. <laughs> that should be my new slogan. Full of beans. Okay, now the lighting is not the best on me at this angle, but whatevs. Let's give our chili a try and not spill on my pretty pink shirt. That is gonna be so great. On top of rice, I'm gonna eat that on its own. I'm gonna put some tortilla chips on top. I'm gonna put some avocado. I might even make some cornbread later this week if I'm feeling like it. Ooh, chili is just one of those amazing meals that even if you find yourself kind of getting sick of chili after a few days, you can just put it in the freezer. Save a few portions for yourself for the future. Your future self will thank you and you're not letting any food go to waste, so. There's my unsolicited tip of the day. There you go, my friends, meal prep done for the week. I hope you really love making these lunch recipes. Let me know in a comment down below if you try them. Make sure you like this video and subscribe below if you haven't already. I do meal preps all the time, grocery hauls, recipe videos, you name it. I'm here to help you live your best vegan life, so let's be friends. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.